Today, we remember 9-11 18 years after the terror attacks that killed nearly 3,000 people. Then we will pivot to politics and also preview tomorrow's Democratic debate. ABC News political director Rick Klein will join us from Houston, the site of the contest. Also, a former federal prosecutor who says we are facing a full-blown constitutional crisis, all thanks to the guy on your screen. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thank you for joining us. We begin tonight with a solemn day, September 11th, 18 years after the one of the worst days in American history. Today, it was marked by commemorations throughout our area with large ceremonies in New York, Washington, and also in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. At Elmiro Abad, Marie Rose Abad. Nearly 3,000 names read out loud. David Lawrence Angel. As the nation stops to remember all of those who lost their lives 18 years ago during the terror attacks on September 11th. At ground zero, where the first two planes flew into the Twin Towers, the memories are still raw. Two airplanes have attacked, apparently. 23 NYPD officers died that day, but more than 10 times that number have lost their lives to 9-11 related illnesses. President Trump has signed a law earlier this year that funds care for those suffering with illnesses from their heroism that day. The ceremonies today are seen not only as a chance to remember, but as a chance to come together as one nation. To me, it's the greatest legacy of 9-11 is that we have this immense capacity for compassion and caring and empathy and service to one another. In Washington, D.C., President Trump honors the men and women who died when the third plane hit the Pentagon. We cannot erase the pain. But we offer you our eternal pledge that your loved ones will never, ever be forgotten. And Vice President Mike Pence remembering Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Here, where a common field one day became a field of honor forever. And now, children of some of the first responders on September 11th they're old enough to become firefighters themselves. They want to follow the footsteps of their dads who gave so much on that day and in the aftermath of the attacks. On this anniversary of that darkest day, a bright peek into the future, a new generation of heroes emerging. In this fall's graduating class of the Fire Academy, the Probies are children of heroes. He's semi-conscious at this point. The sons and daughters of 9-11 following their father's footsteps as New York's bravest, the New York Fire Department. These young men and women that are graduating from Proby School are, uh, are following in the footsteps of the father that perhaps they were too young to remember, and I think that's tremendous. Who can forget the monumental loss? Of the nearly 3,000 killed that day, 343 were firefighters, many trapped at the base of the towers. As they headed up to save lives, they lost their own. 18 years later, Matthew Jovic, held here as a baby in the arms of his dad, Anthony, wants to be a firefighter. Anthony Regalia honoring his father, Leonard. Robert Talarcio died last October from cancer linked to Ground Zero. His son, Robert Jr., carrying the family torch. Over the years, dozens of legacy graduates have joined the force. Now this group of 16 paying an impactful tribute to their parents' memory. It's very heartwarming that they want to follow in their father's footsteps. I'm sure there's a lot of nervousness by their families, but I would imagine there's great pride. 9-11 was, of course, filled with tragedy, but that horrific day, it also resulted in some people forming new bonds and new friendships. Files one's Claire Kerr, she has this story. These two men are connected by a hip. Fred Eichler and Jonathan Judd were both in New York City's North Tower during the 9-11 attack 18 years ago. I was on the 83rd floor, and I'm one of eight or nine people that actually watched the plane come in to hit the building. Judd was on his way up to the 85th floor in an elevator when it stopped on the 83rd and he saw several other elevator banks exploding. So he ran into the closest office, which happened to be Fred Eichler's, a complete stranger at the time. I told Fred that I had finally gotten married at 36 and I had a newborn baby at home. She was six weeks old. 
I honestly wasn't sure whether or not I'd live or die. He recalls Eichler keeping him calm and reassuring him they would make it out despite the seemingly hopeless situation. We were trapped in our office because the plane's jet fuel set the, our corridor outside our door on fire. It was an absolute inferno. Eichler says he was keeping an eye on the door and miraculously saw a flashlight through the smoke to flag down help. A fireman and a building worker wandered onto our floor and rescued us. They made it down the 83 flights of stairs just minutes before the building collapsed, which Eichler says was only possible because of his recent hip replacement surgery. I could not have gotten out of that building if I did not have Dr. Asmus replace my hip 19 months earlier. 18 years later, he and Judd both visited Dr. Stanley Asnes at North Shore University Hospital to thank him and give thanks for each other. Thank you very much, Fred, for keeping me as calm as you did and for giving me hope when I needed it the most. Reporting from Manhasset, Claire Kerr, Fios One News. We'll be right back.